Hi, my name is Matt Carancy, and this is 508, a show about Worcester. It is July the 12th, 2012. Also today on the show, we have Mike Hendrickson. Hi, Mike. Hi. And Manda Rose Hendrickson. Hi. <laughs> and I am Michael Benedetti. Brendan Milliken couldn't make it to the show today because of traffic. We have a lot of things going on. Mostly, we're going to be talking about the Worcester Photo Studios and Wormtown Ska. Also, many current events. So let's talk about Wormtown Ska first. Matt, how's it going? Hi. I'm a DJ at WCUW Worcester. Uh-huh. I have a radio program called Wormtown Ska. Okay. It's on Thursday night slash Friday morning, 12 to 2 a.m. Okay. Tonight, actually. I'll be going in to do the show. Okay. Uh, the first hour, I do a little bit of reggae, uh, traditional ska, a uh, little bit of jazzy stuff, you know, the, the, try to vary it out. And then yeah. the second hour is punk ska and ska core and the heavier stuff. So okay. it's well varied. Cool. Um, I have a side project, which is separate from WCUW entirely, which is called Do It Yourself, Wormtown Ska Promotions. It's okay. a not-for-profit not side project of mine. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be bringing in a ska program, a, excuse me, a ska show yeah. to the Raven, August 17th, it's a Friday night ology show with Super Ska from Boston, Copacetics from Rhode Island, and the original Jelly Roll So also from Rhode Island. It's going to be a great show. Cool, cool. I'm glad to hear about this. I want to ask you, how did you get started doing Ska, radio, Ska, show organizing, all that kind of stuff? Uh, I guess it was a passion of mine. When I was a teenager, I was very much involved with the Worcester Artist Group, both on Hollow Street and in Cherry Valley. Mm -hmm. And I went from there to um, the Espresso Bar and okay. all the other types of all-ages venues. Mm -hmm. And as I grew up, I thought to myself, you know, I really, really appreciated that when I was younger, and we need more of that now. Yeah. So I'm hoping that I can develop something, get a lot more bands out, and maybe even hopefully develop a uh, group to put together an all-ages venue here in the city, maybe, if that's huh. a future possibility. That's a cool idea. How long, how, how long have you been doing the radio show? Uh, actually, I just started the radio show back in May. I haven't right. been doing it for very long at all. But you've gotten, pretty, you've gotten good feedback, yeah? Yeah, it seems to be. I mean, I've been pushing it real hard on Facebook. I have um, my own personal web, uh, Facebook page, which is Wooska Do. Mm -hmm. That's my funny way of saying Worcester does a ska. Yeah. Um, and I have two pages. One is the do-it-yourself Worm Town Scott Promotions page, and the other page is for the WCUW program. So I uh, put up a lot of stuff up at the Facebook there. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I guess it really is just a passion of mine to play music and bring live events to the city. Yeah. I want to ask you, actually, I don't know that I've ever, I only lived in Worcester for like 10 years, and I don't go to a huge number of shows, but I don't see a lot of ska shows going on. Are that's, there a lot of ska shows going That's on? exactly it, too. There really aren't very many. Worcester has a really great metal um, scene going on, yes. and we do bring in the punk and the hardcore, which is great stuff, but there's very, very little focus on ska, and mm. I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring the show to WCUW, is to bring to the city and the airwaves some really great stuff that people aren't aware of. Hmm. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of people think that reggae is where ska came from, when in fact, ska is the grandfather, the grandfather to reggae. Oh, is that right? Yes. So, yeah, because for people who don't know, for people who don't know, what are you talking about with ska? It's a little like reggae. Yeah, a little bit. Um, when I try to explain to people ska, I, uh, well, first I talk about the upbeat. It's okay. that every, uh, that, that second beat, the up, you know, it's kind of what you would hear. Uh, if you listen to really old school uh, blues from New Orleans back in the 40s and 50s you'll, and mm -hmm. the 60s, you'll hear a little bit of that upbeat. That tch, 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 tch. Yeah. And well, what happened was that it got really famous in Jamaica in the 50s and 60s, and they developed that sound into ska. And then it became more and more popular, and it went to other areas of the world. It became popular in, in what they call the second wave, which was in England. And that mm -hmm. was kind of sort of the punky stuff, and as well as a two-tone flavor. And uh, it just kind of spread out. I mean, there's, there's jazz ska, mm -hmm. swing ska, punk ska, hardcore ska. And then there's the traditional roots, rock steady, reggae ska. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on the show, and thanks for talking about this. You definitely contacted me via Facebook before, which people should do, because it's an awesome thing. And, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on to talk about that. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. So, so we get the Wormtown Ska, you get the radio show, you get this big Ska show coming up at the Raven. People who are into it, Matt is bringing it back. We're going to talk about the Worcester Photo Studio here in one second.
course, we're going to talk about public events. We're going to cover a couple of stories that we've been talking about recently on this show. There has been a lot of violent deaths in Worcester this year. We're not going to talk about this because I don't really know what commentary to provide to this. Um, panhandling, we've been talking about that the city is going to give it an, a, another shot at cracking down on panhandling. The plan for this will be revealed, I think, on July 17th, and that will be the time probably when the opposition for this will also appear, because we'll know actually what is the story there. The Palladium. We talked on this show about how the Palladium was threatening to, get to, 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 to demolish the Palladium because their taxes had gone up, and I think we also said that it was probably just like a thing that they were putting out there to try to see if they could negotiate with the city. Unfortunately, it's actually been taken to the next level. This week, John Fisher and John Souza, the co-owners of the Worcester Palladium, have asked the Worcester Historical Commission to let them fast track demolition. Um, there's a hearing on July 26th about this because the value of the property, uh, or the reason that they want to demolish this is because they feel like it may not be profitable to run it anymore. The value of the property was reassessed. Um, their 2012 tax bill, or it would, their 2012 tax bill would jump 276 percent from 2011, an increase of $42,000. Preservation Worcester, among others, will oppose the demolition. This would just be, of course, a ridiculous thing for the Palladium to go away. You know, like it just seems like there's so many things in the city where the city gets hundreds of thousands of dollars of grants and gives people all these tax breaks for years and years to try to bring certain venues to the city. Here you've got something which is like super awesome and like. The fact that we could potentially lose this just because of like forty-two thousand dollars a year seems really sad. You guys, you guys are like nodding. Yeah. Do you have it, no? It's it's not utilized enough, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've seen so many shows at the Palladium. I mean, I remember I think it was Limp Bizkit I even saw at the Palladium <laughs> oh, okay. with um, I th it might have been Snoop Dogg. No, I'm not sure. I just remember it was an awesome place to go. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been there in years, mm -hmm. but I mean, same thing with the Worcester Odd. I mean, yeah. that nothing's happened there for a long time, and I remember being a 15-year-old kid waiting out there mm. just to go in, and, you know, we need these landmarks in Worcester. Absolutely. We do, we do. Matt, did Absolutely. you have a comment on this? There is actually a petition online yes. um, that I've signed, uh, and I got a whole bunch of other people to sign as well through my webpage at Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, it's done through change.org, so people out there that want to look it up and sign that petition would be really great. Yeah. Uh, the Palladium was a big part of my youth, just as much as um, it was for him. And I remember seeing all kinds of great, great shows come through there, yeah. in, uh, including um, the George Clinton P Funk at that, the play. That was amazing. Whoa! And we're gonna d demolish that? I don't understand how they could do that. That's you know, it's sad to say that that could be a possibility. I know, it's very frustrating, it's very crazy making. Well, luckily, again, people, Preservation Worcester is working against demolishing this because of historical, architectural type purposes. Other people are filing other petitions. Um, hopefully the city and the Palladium will be able to negotiate something about this. I know that there's plenty of people who are able to renegotiate their assessments, appeal their assessments with the city. I hope it's something that can happen here because it's a terrible thing to lose over what is, for an individual, a lot of money, but which is for the culture of the city, not a lot of money. Um, there's going to be a food truck festival at Elm Park on Saturday, July 14th from 11 to 4 p.m. Uh, there will be one Worcester-based food truck there called Kona Ice, where I, which I've never seen around before, according to Worcester Magazine. Um, there was, uh, you know, we used to have more food truck vendors in the city, and then in 2008, the city council uh, voted to basically uh, in, much increase the regulations on food trucks to make it harder for them to operate in the city. There had been a couple of restaurants downtown that had complained and said uh, these food trucks are taking away our business, which is a weird thing to think about if you're a restaurant and like the hot dog man is like cutting into your bottom line. Maybe you're, <laughs> maybe you're doing something wrong as a restaurant. But uh, yeah, the city council passed this. It was a, it was a narrow vote, um, and we've lost a lot of food trucks since then. Uh, there's actually three people on the council right now who had voted for that crackdown. We're still on the council. Uh, Councilors Eddie, Lukes, Palpatine, and Mayor Joe Petty also. Um, I hope that they will stand firm to their convictions and pick at this festival. I expect that they will not, and it actually might just schmooze around there. But anyway, it's sort of ridiculous that we're having a food truck festival in a city which is an anti-food truck city, but better than nothing. Better than nothing. That's the bright side. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, people have been talking about that um, the Worcester business development something with the C, WBDC Corporation, had put out a plan to basically 
uh, uh, take parking away from the Worcester Public Library. Speaking of taking downtown things that are being successful and uh, hurt, you know hurting them in bizarre ways, they were going to turn it into a hockey rink for college students or two hockey rinks for college students. There have luckily been actually counter proposals being put forth on this, and we may see some movement on what to do with the library parking lot. We could definitely put something cooler there than a parking lot. It would be nice if the cooler thing involved parking for the library. Um, uh, there's an art exhibit at the Hanover Theater that opened this week and runs through October. It is called Natural Memories and features art by Margaret Emerson. I got an email about this. I didn't realize that there was a gallery at the Hanover. Have you guys been in this gallery? Yeah. Yeah, what's it like in there? Well, I've, I've just seen um, a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I go to the Hanover once in a while, but yeah. the See No Evil Project, I saw some of their work there mm -hmm. a couple months past. And it was just, it was awesome. It was all Worcester residents for the most part. Yeah. Um, Got to see a lot of familiar faces, mm -hmm. and I love any galleries that are in the city. I mean, City yeah. Hall even has one. An basement. art gallery? Well, in the basement. It's not really that oh. much of an art gallery, but more of a long hallway full of pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but they call it a gallery. I like that. Well, I tell you, I, this is one thing I love about Worcester, which is I feel like I feel like I try to pay attention to what's going on in Worcester. I certainly am aware of many things every week going on in Worcester, and yet every day there's something where it's like, how did I not... Oh, I should have known this. How did I not aware of this? So I'm totally going to go check out this exhibit, Natural Memories, at the Hanover uh, in the coming weeks. Finally, one more current events thing, and then we're going to talk about the Worcester Photo Studios. This is a John Lurie-based thing. People, of course, are aware of John Lurie, jazz legend, acting legend, now very successful international artist from Worcester. We talked last week about the story of how he got his first saxophone, which is an amazing story that people should look up online. Uh, and he has sent us a note saying that he thinks it was a man named James Washington who gave him this saxophone. So we're continuing to do research into um, the people of Worcester in the early 70s to find out more about what was going on there. Anyway, thank you very much, Mr. Lurie, for that information and for helping with that anecdote. The Worcester Photo Studio. Mike, Amanda, how are you guys? Good, good. <laughs> Very good. Which of you guys wants to introduce this facility here? This is where we are, by the way. I'm sorry, I'm just interrupting. No these guys are throwing these guys off. This is how we do it on this show, man. Just interruptions, <laughs> paint, whip pan. This is called Fresh. a whip pan. Since we're in a photo studio, ladies and gentlemen, this is called a whip pan. Whip pan. 90 May Street, right by Big Y. Kind of a warehouse looking building, kind of an industrial looking building. Worcester Photo Studios. What's going on here? Which of you guys wants to introduce this? Well, actually, I'll let Man introduce. So I'm here with my brother today, Yes. siblings. Um, <laughs> so we're on the staff here at Worcester Photo Studios. Yes. Uh, we're at 90 May Street. Yes. Um, it's a 10,000 square foot studio. Okay. Um, it's a neon blue, baby blue building uh -huh. um, behind the CVS on Park Ave, so you can't miss it. Right. Um, we have, you know, it's a membership based studio. So mm -hmm. the idea is, you know, networking, um, kind of community based studio, okay. as opposed to those, you know, rent by the hour type things. Okay. Um, so we've got classroom, model changing areas, backdrops, lighting setups, you know, everything you need to get, you know, that perfect picture from the beginning stages, you know, makeup, hair, changing rooms, um, all that kind of stuff is all here in this one building in Worcester. Um, it's, it's really growing. It's becoming just this a major, you know, catalyst for art photography in Worcester. Um, Members have access to, you know, all the amenities of the studio, so they mm -hmm. can use lighting setups. They can come in here 24/7, um, really kind of in, immerse themselves in, in the the process. Okay. Um, and and what is and if somebody wants to be a member, what does that look like? What do they? Um, so membership is $125 a month. Okay. Um, for 24/7 access, so right. there's no contract. Um, they get a discount on classes. We have monthly events. We have all kinds of. Um, you know, classes that we'll be having that they get discounts on. So if somebody's so, a photographer and they don't have their own space or they need a bigger space or whatever, or they want to schmooze with people or they want to <laughs> use cool stuff, this is where they should check it out. This is the way, this is the place to go, yeah. Um, this is, a lot of people start off not knowing, you know, they want to get into this. We also have seasoned professionals that have been doing this, so it's, you know, the whole gamut of hobbyists, beginners, all the way to, you know, seasoned professionals. Oh, that's awesome. So. Um, and there's a big event coming up on Sunday? Yep, we have our great model shoot, which is an event which we started about two years ago. Okay. Patrick Sullivan and I. Um, he's one of the owners of the studio, along with Chris Rinney. Mm -hmm. So the great model shoot, what it is, is we have about 
anywhere from 100 to 200 people come through the building. Okay. Models, hair, makeup, photographers, um, people with really awesome props. Mm -hmm. We even have a guy from New Hampshire who brings snakes and swords down. Awesome. And we fill it as a portfolio building event. So, a so event. if somebody's a, somebody's a photographer and they want to like take some pictures of some models or some cool stuff, we have some pretty under models. good conditions. This is the place where you can come and take some awesome photos. Yep. You can try out, you can try out lights. You can try out different cameras. We have a lot of people that actually exchange lenses, exchange camera bodies, mm -hmm. um, and working with the models is like the easiest thing here. Yeah. You can literally find a model, pull her aside and say, hey, I want to do pictures of you later in that blue dress that you wore. Mm -hmm. Or you can find a photographer and say, hey, I saw your images on Facebook or on your website. Can you uh, make some time for me over here? And mm. we've been doing it for about two years now. And that's well, wait, why we got so, the building. So if, somebody, so if you want the photographers, a photographer to take a picture of you at this, yeah. you could come out here and get your, get your picture Only taken? Only $20. So wait, so who has to pay for what at this? Okay, photographers pay $40. Okay. Models pay $20. Okay. And we provide model releases, we provide lunch, beverages, um, equipment, and just a really good time. This we run awesome. it all day long. This is awesome. Everyone's this is, invited. Everyone is invited. You know, and, and the idea is to get, you know, we have a membership-based, you know, community here for 24-7 right. <clears throat> access of the studio. Um, but for the model shoot, everyone's invited. You don't have to have model before. You know, you can just come down, get some awesome photos. Bring um, outfits. <laughs> bring crazy outfits. And so this is just a thing for people who aren't members who want to come in, see what's yes. going on, try this, but, like you said, build a portfolio. But if you're a member and you've paid your 125 a month, then you get to come to these events for free. That's awesome. We have a lot of free events that belong to the studio. So, so this is Sunday. July 15th, 15th, 9 to 8 a.m., 9 in the morning to 8, 8, 8 p.m. This is a lot all day thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we, we used to have it a lot shorter, but we found that everyone was staying a lot later, and so yeah. we made the events a lot longer. You guys want to walk around? Sure. Show us the, show us the place. Here right. it is. Sure. So we'll start back this way. Okay. Right over here, we're actually going to be building a cyclorama. Okay. And if you don't know what cyclorama is, basically no corners. So wall meets the floor. So it's kind of like this deal over here. Exactly. Where it's just like a big white sheet. So there's no like yes. edge. So we don't have to worry about paper costs anymore. We'll just have to invest in a little bit in paint costs. Okay. So we have that over here. And then right over here, we actually just refinished some wood. So we this should point out that we're, we should point out that everything is like in a state of rapid construction right now and like there's like a certain amount of debris and there's a certain amount of yes. stuff that's going to be here Sunday that's not here right now. Everything's going to be clean by Sunday. Okay. We have amazing people that come and help us. Okay. So with that said, let's look at some more of this stuff. Um, so right over here, we uh -huh. actually just refinished some of the wood that was originally here in the building. Okay. Refinished, coated, sealed, and now it's as good as new. So this is a spot if somebody needs to do something involving a nice hardwood floor. Yes. And we have people that actually bring in different backdrops, um, different things they might find at Home Depot. They put them right on the wall and uh -huh. they have a different backdrop, say a brick wall yeah. or um, nice wallpaper. Mm -hmm. People do it all here. We allow everyone to kind of use the studio as they need it. Cool. Can we, can we look at the dog real quick? Oh, of course. What is this? This was from my parents' house and it's, <laughs> we used to scare each other with it. And I brought it to a model shoot before and everyone really seemed to love it. We haven't <laughs> named him yet. Hi. But it Hi. freaks people out. We move in different places and stuff. That's awesome. Okay. Oh, and since we're back here, um, we actually built the stage because we occasionally have people perform at the great model shoot, oh, one okay. of our events. And also, right now, it's being used for another band, mm -hmm. Dr. Gonzo's band. Ah, okay. Good deal. Good deal. Because Dr. Road, Gonzo is also in this space orchestra. now. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So if we can keep wandering around. We also have whatever. a DJ station up there. <laughs> and if you can look, that big black box up there, uh -huh. that is actually a movie screen. Whoa. We can have movie nights here. Um, we've actually asked the Worcester Filmworks if they'd be interested. There's and a lot of good stuff here already, and you're building more. Okay. Yeah. And so right over here, we'll have mm -hmm. all just different bays. And we can actually turn off all the lights in the building if we want to. Right. All the lights are um, 
And then there's like all these like regular professional photographer type lights that yeah. are here. A lot of this is our equipment, but mm -hmm. we also have some members that leave their equipment down here. Okay. Because they find it not appropriate to set up in their living room every day. Yes, yes. Um, and right over here, we're actually building rooms dedicated to product photography. Okay. Um, this is basically a one week project. <laughs> so product photography, for, so if somebody wants to like take a photo of a little yeah, doodad. Yeah, like a, they build figurines or they're into pottery or right. they're um, blacksmiths and want pictures of their stuff. Right. They could hire a photographer or join the studio and bring their own camera down mm. here and yeah. use some of our lights. Huh. And right behind here, well, actually take a walk around this way. Okay. We that actually to, reminds me, I, I end up selling a lot of things on eBay these days. Maybe hey. I should get a membership and just, then I don't have to spend all this time trying to figure out how to take a good picture on my table. Just, yep, that's whoa, what we're here for. this floor is, this is like steel plates. Oh, yep. I'll tell you about that in one moment. Okay. But right back here, uh -huh. we're building a dark room for oh. people who like to go old school. Yeah. And right now we're actually standing in a steel room, which we built. Um, these are about 160 pounds a piece. Okay. And they're not fun to put up. They're very imagine. scary, especially when we're putting those up. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we had these scattered all throughout the building. They protected the floor uh -huh. um, because originally they used to make weaving looms in here. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of heavy equipment in here. Sure. So. And this protected the floor and we decided to salvage them and make a steel room. Eventually they'll be polished and buffed and they'll look a million bucks. This already looks kind of awesome though if you were doing some sort of industrial oh, type thing. And this is actually some of our lighting equipment. These are actually homemade light rings. Um, Pat built this one. I built this one. These are and amazing. I've seen it. Mandy use these to shoot, use light rings to shoot stuff. I don't understand what they do besides make them look awesome. Okay. It basically leaves no shadows on your face. Okay. And it puts a beautiful ring of light in your eye. Uh, yes, yes. There's a little bit more work to it than that, but uh -huh. I mean, that's the basic gist of it. I love and people it. love them. Yeah, they are cool. Right over here, we have equipment storage. Okay. So anyone comes to the studio and says, hey, I need a power cord because I want to plug in my phone, my laptop, and my coffee maker. We got it right here. Cords, box of cords, ladies and gentlemen. Umbrellas, light <laughs> stands, backdrop stands, more cords, and lots of other miscellaneous things that photographers love. Good stuff. And a new addition to the studio, this is going live this week. Uh huh. We have our own makeup room now. Oh, this is a makeup room. Yep. Here it is. And it's got a nice door to, so that the loud people. We always have makeup people in here, and we want to make sure they're happy, comfortable, yes. and have a good time. Good deal. This is our kitchenette. This is awesome. How much, so is, you, how much is the coffee if you're a member? Free. Coffee, water's free. Check it out Green Mountain Coffee. I, I'm very delighted. Our at own Keurig. This is great. It's like one of those little capsule coffee makers. So deal. you can actually cook here. We have our own little convection oven. Okay. And bring your food here. Bring whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Just mark it. <laughs> here we are in a room with a loud fan or a lot of air. Con is air conditioning in this room? Yes. This is our models changing room. Okay. Uh, this way they have their privacy. They can bring whatever they want in here. Right. They can change in these little stalls which we built. Here we go. And then we have. Models have their own bathroom in here. Okay. And we have do have plans for a shower in there because sometimes models get dirty. Sure. This is awesome though. You get the food, you get, I mean, this is, yeah, you could just be working here all day. Yeah, and we, we ask for 125 a month for membership. We don't do any hourly rates because we want people to be here all the time. Mm -hmm. We want this to be huge. Yeah. And we know it's going to be. Here's some cool stuff. We got a lot of cameras, a lot of. Yep. This is actually, we've got these from various auctions and also donations to the studio. Uh -huh. A lot of these can be used as props. If you're a photographer here, you can just come down and use some of these as also, props. the Joker. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why this is there, but there he is. It's awesome. Yes. And that's also our, our, our very first portrait that oh. was dropped off here. That's Mike Gill. Oh, cool. He's kind of famous he's around here. He's, he's one of our studio mascots. <laughs> we also have a studio cat. And you wait, what game is this? Uh, this is Centipede, I believe. Ladies and gentlemen. That also comes along with studio membership. We right. have a piano, um, lots of old projectors. Uh -huh. And right up here, I, I excuse, um, excuse our... We appearance. still have drywall and things happening. Yeah, excuse our appearance, but right up here is our lounge area. Okay. We have um, 
various couches. We have a TV with Apple TV hooked up to it, so you can watch your Netflix on there. Awesome TV, a lot of furniture. We got giant teddy bears. You can also meet with clients oh, or yeah. models, photographers. <clears throat> if you're a model, you can also belong to the studio. Mm -hmm. You can pay the same rate, bring various photographers in, or mm -hmm. if you're a photographer, bring various models in. We should mention real quick also, by the way, just in case you need oh, him. Yes. Dr. Gonzo's over here. Okay. He's got the best rubs, spices, <laughs> and concoctions. Yes. Okay. So, right over here we have servers. Okay. So if you belong to the studio, you can back up your stuff with us. Okay. No charge right now. Good deal. Um, and right here we actually washer and dryer. And we're building more storage as mm -hmm. the days go by. All right. And bathroom. And very then, good. of course, there's our office. I can't show you that right now. It's top secret in there. All right. But it's very cool. I'm going to block it off. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, hey, hey, thanks for showing me around, Mike. Yeah. I want to also thank the other guests who have been on today's show. Amanda, thank you very much for being on the show. Matt, thanks for being on the show. No problem. This is very cool. This is very cool. This is good stuff. So we got the Wormtown Scout Radio Show people need to check out. We got a show coming up at the Raven on August... Friday, August 17th. Friday, August 17th. It's Super Ska, the Copacetics, and the original Jelly Roll Soul. This is the show, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we got here at the Worcester Photo Studios. You're into photography. You could become a member here. You're into getting your picture taken or just playing around taking other people's pictures, building portfolios, as you said. July the 15th, Sunday, all day. And it happens every month. And it, ha it happens every month. Yep, we do. The we started every couple months, and then all of a sudden... We started getting way too many people, so we had to make it every month that way. Less and less people would come, but then we started getting even more people. I love Worcester so much. I hope that you love Worcester a little, a little bit more. Possibly hate me a little bit more, but love Worcester a little bit more after watching this show. This is 508. If you have any complaints or comments, pieandcoffee at gmail.com is the email address. We will talk to you all next week. Thanks for watching.